one video for today, man. We're gonna be talking about the Joes, the Joes tragedy, Bianchi, Bianchi tragedy, uh, racing family. Obviously, Leclerc, you know, one of his best friends, basically like a brother to him. And uh, the reason I'm doing this uh, uh, is because I wanted to kind of understand if there's any similarities between this unfortunate incident and what Pierre Gasly almost almost experienced this past weekend. Um, I, a lot of people have been talking about it. I, I've already said my part and it, my, my voice. And like I said, it's unacceptable. Why is there a whole tractor on the track in the middle of an F1 race? I've, I've said that I'm, I'm going to continue to say that, but obviously it, it caused, you know, Pierre Gasly a uh, good position in the race because he did crash in the first two, three laps because of it. But I think, I think, I think he still did came more and finished the race if I'm correct. But anyway, Let's go and check it out. Let's go and see what's on. Like I said, we, we kind of already know a bit already about Jules, no whole incident, but like I said, from my point of view, I just want to see just a bit more, just just want a bit more about it. Anyway, hope you guys are doing good. Amazing. Don't, don't forget to like the video and sub as well. Let's get it. From time to time, we see promising drivers enter the sport of Ugh. Formula One. As fans, we love the hard-working talent stories that have us heavily invested in one's journey through one of the toughest businesses there is. This was Jules Bianchi. Jules was on Bianchi. his way to being one of Formula One's Wasn't newest Bianchi? stars Bianchi. and most promising talents. With the history of racing running in the Bianchi family, Jules put his talent on display while karting and in the junior categories. In the words of Felipe Massa, he said Jules was the best go-kart driver he saw in his life. Mm. That's quite that's, a compliment for a championship caliber driver and the president of the FIA International Karting Commission. Like other topics such as this one, the information used in this video is only what is made publicly available. It's important not to speculate here, and it's best to stick to the facts. Sources will be mentioned in the video and the description. Jules saw some decent results during his rise through the motorsport ranks, including winning the championship in the French Formula Renault series back in 2007, That's good. and a couple years later That's in 2009, Jules would win the Formula 3 Euro Series championship. His talent didn't go unnoticed. In fact, he was rumored to step in for the injured Felipe Massa after his accident in 2009. Mm. Rumors are rumors, but Jules would take part in a young driver's test for Ferrari in December of 2009, alongside the top three drivers from the 2009 Italian Formula 3 Championship. Ferrari was so impressed with Jules that they signed a deal with him. Jules Bianchi became the first ever recruit to the Ferrari yeah. Driver Academy. Because Leclerc said that was supposed to be his spot. Leclerc said that was supposed to be Jules' spot. And, you know, obviously Leclerc's racing for Ferrari now, so, you know, what he's doing, man, really, in, the, in his name of Jules is, that's why, that's my guy, Leclerc is my guy, man, that's my favorite driver in F1. Jules would that's become Ferrari's official test and reserve driver for 2011, and would be loaned Ooh, to Force India in 2012. Nice. Where he would take part in nine that free Force practice India sessions. Car is he would tough. also be the team's official reserve driver. This was a great opportunity for him to gather more regular experience in a Formula One car, as well as being more familiar with the routine of a Formula One weekend. This, I imagine, would have been helpful since a full-time seat in Formula One was looking more and more likely as time mm. went on. Jules would get that full-time role in 2013, driving for Marussia, a smaller budget backmarker team. Nevertheless, Jules made it to Formula One. Competitive car or not, like many other drivers, you have to start somewhere. Right. And Ferrari still watched his progress very closely. He finished his first season 19th with zero points, Jeez. but without a decent car under him, there it's wasn't exactly hard. much Jules could do, yeah. <laughs> aside from just finish yeah. the race and take a position here and there if the opportunity arose. Marussia kept Jules Bianchi for the 2014 season, where he would partner Max Chilton. Out of nine races, Jules is. would outperform his teammates in eight of them. The real feel-good story would come at Monaco. Jules dragged his Marussia MR03 to P9, scoring two championship points, the first ever for the team. That's a P9 up. finish for a team like Marussia is a huge boost for the team's overall morale and gave them a little bit of hope, as well as giving the fans a possible look at what was yet to come. Towards the back end of the season, the departure of Fernando Alonso from Ferrari was looking more and more likely. Jules Bianchi stated that he was ready for the opportunity should Ferrari give him a call. Just days later at the Japanese Grand Prix, the race would take place under extreme conditions. So this happened at the, the same track. Oh my god. 
FIA didn't. Heavy rain due to an approaching typhoon made for difficult track conditions and visibility issues. Adrian Sutil would crash on the outside of Turn 7, otherwise known as the Dunlop Curve. A tractor crane was deployed to the scene in order to remove Sutil's Sauber, and yellow flags were brought out in order to slow the cars. One lap later, Jules Bianchi lost control of the car in the same area as Sutil. Reports state that the flowing of the water on the track was the reason for the drivers going off in that area. Jules was heading in the same direction of where Sutil's car was being removed and made contact with the tractor, which caused it to lift off the ground, dropping Sutil's car. Whoa, Marshall's whoa, immediately whoa, 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 what? was being removed and made contact with the tractor, Hold Sauber, up. and yellow flags were brought out in order to slow the cars. One lap later, Jules Bianchi lost control of the car in the same area as Sutil. Reports state that the flowing... So yellow flags came out. So yellow flags came out, right? The next lap, he loses control of the car. Maybe I missed something, but something, something isn't adding up. Something isn't adding up. ...of the water on the track was the reason for the drivers going on I know he said don't area. be speculating stuff was like heading that. in the same direction but... of where Sutil's car was being removed and made contact no, with the yeah, tractor, yeah. which caused it to lift off the ground, dropping Sutil's car. Jesus Marshalls immediately attended to Jules and he was reported as being unconscious. Oh medical personnel arrived at the crash site and Jules was soon taken to the circuit's medical center. The decision was made to transport Jules to a hospital, but due to the weather conditions, the helicopter was unable to fly. Jules was transported via ambulance with a police escort to Mia Prefectural General Medical Center, which was about 15 kilometers away from the track and a 32 minute drive. Jules suffered a traumatic brain injury. Oh His family God. released a statement saying, Jules remains in the intensive care unit of the Mia General Medical Center in Yokaichi. He suffered a diffuse axonal injury and is in a critical but stable condition. The medical professionals at the hospital are providing the very best treatment and care, and we are grateful for everything they have done for Jules since his accident. This is a very difficult time for our family, but the messages of support and affection for Jules from all over the world have been a source of great comfort to us. We would like to express our sincere appreciation. The cause of the accident wasn't down to just one reason. It's a combination of poor weather conditions, flawed safety procedures, and also human error. Shortly after the accident, a video circulated around social media, which showed green flags being waved while the tractor was still in the process of removing Satil's Sauber. The tractor is still on the track. And you're calling a green flag. In these conditions. <sighs> wow. 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 Motorsport.com have a piece on this situation saying that the marshal was following the regulations at the time. When the tractor passed the marshal post, the green flag came out. An investigation was launched by the FIA, and a 10-man panel were given the task to thoroughly investigate what happened. A 396-page report was issued containing their findings and was presented to the FIA World Motorsport Council. Key findings of the investigation were published pages. on the FIA website and That's include 11 dot points to summarise. Water flowing onto the track was obviously a big reason as to why the two cars went off at that section. Another issue that was found during the investigation can be found at point 7. During the two seconds Bianchi's car was leaving the track and traversing the runoff area, he applied both the throttle and brake together using both feet. The failsafe algorithm is designed to override the throttle and cut the engine but was inhibited by the torque coordinator which controls the rear brake by wire system. Bianchi's Marisha has a unique design of brake by wire which proved to be incompatible with the fail safe settings. The FIA concluded the dot points by saying, it is considered fundamentally wrong to try and make an impact between a racing car and a large heavy vehicle survivable. It is imperative to prevent a car ever hitting the crane and all marshals working near it. A number of recommendations were made after the investigation and some big changes were set to enter the sport in the name of safety and making sure this never happens again. But guess what?
it almost happened again. Some of the most notable changes include the introduction of the virtual safety car and the 4 hour rule, meaning the start time and event shall not be less than 4 hours before either sunset or dusk, except in the case of a night race. This accident also re-sparked conversations about closed cockpits. Jules Bianchi was moved to a hospital in his home country of France to continue with his recovery and be easier for his family to access. On the 25th of July 2015, Jules Bianchi tragically passed away. A statement from the family read, It is with deep sadness that the parents of Jules Bianchi, Felipe and Christine, his brother Tom and sister Melanie, wish to make it known that Jules passed away last night. Jules fought to the end, as he has always done, but yesterday his battle ended. We feel an immense and indescribable pain. Hearts around the world broke for Jules Bianchi. An accident that resulted in the death of a Formula 1 driver shook the racing world, and it was a sad reminder to everyone that motorsport can be cruel. Yeah. His funeral was attended by various Formula 1 drivers who paid their respects to a fellow racer and rising talent. Jules was the first Formula 1 driver to pass away since Ayrton Senna in Imola back in 1994. This tragedy stings so much because we never got to see the full potential of Jules in a competitive car. We just saw the beginning of his journey, and the potential he had was realised by all around him. Former Ferrari chairman Luca di Montezemolo said that Jules Bianchi was the driver the team had picked for when Kimi Raikkonen's time with Ferrari came to an end. That's what Jules was, the future. He was an exciting story that a lot of people looked forward to seeing. Though we never saw that, right. the legacy of Jules Bianchi remains forever. Carried on by the fans and his godson Charles Leclerc, Jules Bianchi yeah, is simply yeah. too important to ever forget. Damn. That's, uh... Dang. This is very unfortunate. Uh... Yeah, that, that one stung. That one, that one stung. I, I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. That one stung, man. Uh, you know, you, you know how F1 is. You know, uh, it's a dangerous sport in general. Um, but that could have been prevented. That could have been prevented, man. Uh, yeah. Anyway, hope you guys did enjoy the video. Don't forget to like the video, answer as well, sub as well. You guys, let me know you guys' thoughts on the whole situation. Um, yeah, you guys just let me know you guys thoughts on it. Don't forget to like us up. See you guys later, man. Peace.